us is Dr. Tracy Payton Miller, and she is an assistant professor of horticulture at Langston University, and is also responsible for managing the pilot program for the hemp uh, program that Langston's working on. Yes. So, Dr. Miller, tell us a little bit about what's going on with hemp and what you're finding from farmers and that sort of stuff. Okay, so Langston is part of the hemp pilot program, and so to grow hemp legally, you have to be under the pilot, which basically means you have to be working with the school that is sponsoring um, farmers at that time. Okay. So we're working with three growers, um, and we're here at one of the houses today to kind of look at their stuff, but basically you just have to have a sponsorship. And so each university sets theirs up a little bit differently, um, but Langston just um, sponsors our farmers and they are allowed to process however they feel and things like that. So we don't we don't process or do anything for them like that. Okay, so you're kind of there as a resource, but you're pretty much letting them do what they need to do right, and right. figure out some of the details of that. Yeah, they get to make the decisions as far as what they want to grow, how they want to grow it. Of course, a lot of them are growing for CBD because that's very lucrative right now. Um, but we give them a lot of that freedom to, to find out exactly how they want to process it and grow it. Okay, and so you mentioned CBD, yes. which is an oil that's extracted out of the plant. Yes. What, what else can we get? This is a hemp, I mean, this is a huge hemp plant It's a huge us. plant, yeah. So, so what can we get out of it? You can get over 100 different uh, compounds out of this plant, actually. But the ones that are most common are CBD. Um, we're also looking at CBG a little bit now for some other health properties. Um, and then there's the big one is Delta 9 THC, which hemp does not have. Okay. Um, that's what makes it hemp is if it has less than 0.3% Delta 9 THC, which is the psychoactive compound, which gives you that high. Okay. So um, hemp is... Um, exactly uh, similar to cannabis, but it's that THC designation that makes the difference, okay. whether it's really, really low or really high. And, and some people are growing hemp also for fiber and seed as That's well? That's exactly right, yeah. Okay. So for CBD, you're ty typically concerned with just female plants. So okay. you don't want any males out there cross-pollinating because that's going to affect your CBD content. Um, but you can also grow outside for CBD, you can grow outside for fiber, and you can also grow outside for what we call dual, dual purpose. So you're growing for seed and fiber. Okay. And so what, what are most people doing? I mean, we're here in a greenhouse where right. you're growing it. Are, right. are people also growing it outside? Then? You can grow it outside, okay. um, but if you're trying to grow all female plants and you get an Oklahoma wind coming <laughs> 10 miles away, it can bring that pollen and pollinate those plants. Okay, so that um, so, problems. Right, so the greenhouse offers you a little bit of protection when you're growing plants for CBD because you are eliminating those males, okay. so you only have the females. And I would imagine season and extension, you can grow it all year round yes. and that sort of stuff yes, as well. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, you just have to have some blackout cloth so you can induce that flowering um, that's required in the crop. So there so. seems to be a little bit of a fever about, you know, It's CBD the Wild and, West right now. Yeah, so can you tell <laughs> us a little bit like how your role has been changing with the laws right. and that sort of right. stuff? How right. do you keep up with it all? So um, it is illegal to grow hemp if you just want to grow it out in the field. You can't do that without sponsorship by a university. Okay. So, um, but we're hoping that since hemp was made um, legal federally and it's in the farm bill, that in the upcoming months, our legislation will actually change to reflect that to where anyone can grow it without university sponsorship. Okay. But right now, under the pilot as it stands, you do have to have that sponsorship still um, until that, that rule is changed. And when, when is that sponsorship available if somebody is interested? I mean, do they reach right. out to you at Langston? Um, is they there a can. Time period? We actually aren't taking any more applicants right now. We are we are set at three. Um, now in the future that could change, but I don't know if that'll change before legislation does. Right. Um, but there are other universities and all of those should be listed through the Oklahoma Department of Ag website or if you call them they can tell you other universities that are working in the pilot. Okay. Yeah. And, and growing it outside, there's there's other challenges as well with irrigation yes. and that sort of. Yes. You're finding a lot of people are using plastic culture. Is that correct? yes, especially if you're growing for CBD, because you have to remember that this is a plant that's not legal. Um, well, it's legal federally, but there aren't any pesticides right now that are registered for use on it or herbicides. So you're stuck with basically some type of conventional tillage to manage weeds or hand by okay. hand. So it can be kind of tricky to manage those weeds in the field if you're growing 10 acres. Um, of CBD plants, which are big and bushy, um, versus those fiber plants, which are planted very close together, shade out the weeds fairly quickly, and are grown more like bamboo. Okay. So it's two different styles of growing a lot of times. And what about, you know, every time you're growing something, you you have this product, but it doesn't necessarily go straight to the store. It usually goes right. to a processor or something. Right. So that's kind of be your middleman, is if you're not processing yourself, you need to find a processor, whether it's fiber, seed, um, removing the seed, or harvesting the flower for CBD, or the whole plant. 
Okay. So, and and yeah. are those processors available? They are. Now? There are processors okay. coming to Oklahoma. We do have a fiber processor um, in both corners of the state, I believe, um, and we have CBD processors coming online all the time. Okay. So it's so, just a matter of finding that market. So CBD is a little bit more of a viable option because there's more options out there. For yeah, us. there's okay. a lot of interest in CBD right now. That's the hot ticket right now. I will say there probably isn't as much of a market for fiber, um, but we're just kind of waiting for that to gain traction. Um, there will be, I'm sure. And, and so. the claims behind CBD is that it's a pain reliever. And that there actually are documented studies, peer-reviewed journals that, that do claim that it does have analgesic properties, antizolytics, so it's good for a lot of anxiety, um, epileptic seizures, pain relief, and those are documented um, in peer-reviewed journals. So there are some other claims, but those aren't um, undocumented at this point in time. Okay. So. All right, Dr. Payton, thank you so much for yeah, sharing welcome. a little bit about this plan. Yeah, absolutely. The information presented in this program is current at the time of airing, but as a new industry for Oklahoma, resources and regulations regarding hemp will be in a dynamic state. Be sure to check out these websites for updated information. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussions.